Altavia 1 is an 80 mile high level route which runs through the eastern Dolomites in Italy. Altavia simply means the high route and this high route passes through some of the finest scenery the Dolomites has to offer. Join me as I take on this challenging and breathtaking hike through huge forests and other intimidating mountain passes, surrendering to nature, its raw beauty and the lessons it gives along the way. Welcome to the high route and welcome to the Dolomites. Welcome to another video and welcome to the Dolomites. I've forgot so much stuff, cut kit, water filter, rain jacket, I forgot loads of stuff so this is going to be interesting. Get into all that later on, let's not, uh, let's not get bogged down in all that. This one's going to be different. That's where I'm going, up this pass and over the tops. That's me. Very busy by the lake, as you'd imagine, because there's a bus stop and a hotel. It is very busy. It's so beautiful, mate. I can't actually believe it. I'm off up here, over this pass. And once we get into the tops and we get some miles under feet, the people will just fade away. And there'll be moments where I'm just on my tod, which I can't wait for. <laughs> right, here we go. See you later everyone, we're off. The last couple of hikes, my toes have got a bit beat up, so I've got, oh, I hate to admit it, but I've got them socks with like the gloved feet on them. So each toe has an individual thing. I don't like looking down at it, but, <laughs> but it's supposed to stop toe blisters, so we'll see. On this first day, the elevation is a lot. We've got to get all the way up into these things. I think I'm going to bust out the old hiking poles early doors, do everything I can to protect my legs, protect my ankle because my ankle's a little bit iffy because I've only got a maximum of seven days to complete this. I'd realised I forgot my raincoat, my cut kit and my water filter so I'm like oh it's forecast thunderstorms so it's going to be wet, hungry and thirsty. I managed to track down a raincoat cost an arm and a leg but I had to do it the roof the refuge huts along the way I can restock at water there so I'll just have to be savvy and just be mindful of where my next water stop is so that I don't run out too soon that's it man I couldn't have turned back I was tempted when I had no raincoat food water I was like oh, I'm gonna turn back but it's taken me a good couple of days to get to the start point missed trains and delayed stuff and uh, I'm finally here and look at it we're not in Yorkshire anymore Dorothy blowing already this is going to test me the elevation in this one's massive there's a few sketchy bits with heights and my call of the void is going to be on overtime but I've got to do it I've wanted to do this hike for so long and here we go and I hope you can join me and I hope we get to the finish but you know, if things aren't working out, my food ain't working, we'll just bail. There's no point in being a hero. We'll see how it all unfolds. Come on. Two minutes into the first ascent. Deployed them. Look how steep that looks quitting through there. That's where I'm going. Once you leave the lake, it's zero to 100. It's so steep up here and it's loose underfoot so you do lose a bit of time with that but my word you're gonna have to be relatively fit if you're thinking of coming on this one it's no South Downs way <laughs> there's the lake that I came around and we're off up there <laughs> sweating mate I'm sweating oh. First bit of uh, Via Ferrata. Via Ferrata translates as Iron Path, 
It refers to metal rungs, ladders or permanently fixed safety wire as a means of crossing otherwise tricky and steep rocky terrain. Via Ferrata were born in the Dolomites during World War I. They were constructed to help men and equipment into strategic positions in the mountains. You don't want to be stacking it down there. Oh, Eddie, call it void. Whistling its tune in my lug hole. Not today, sunshine. Not today. Focus. The level of focus is 100%. And we're getting this done. Heights or no heights. My gosh. Isn't it beautiful? Not a lot of chatting to the camera because I'm saving my air. <laughs> I'm hoping for a lot of water sources up high that are like springy sort of springs that I don't mind drinking out of. The refuge bases like the little camping huts along the way. I'll fill my bottle at them. Should be reet. I just want to drink it all now, but I'm not gonna. This is just what I needed, mate. Just what I needed. <sighs> Real adventure in a new place, in a new country that I've not hiked in, new terrain. I have questions on this one, you know, I try and learn somewhat on every hike. And my last hike near the end of it, my head started to fold in on itself. And, um, <laughs> and after that, I went into a bit of a, I wasn't, I was just not too clever, but I've done the things I needed to do. And I'm well on my way to feeling 100% again, if not better than I've ever been. And this hike is gonna cement that. I've got questions, I'm gonna do a lot of thinking. You probably didn't even to know, need to know this, it's oversharing, but you know, if anybody can take something away from it, I'll feel a little bit better knowing that there's people out there with a platform that suffer and that, that share it and they've got their demons and there's no ways to get out of it and share it, then it might help. And even if it helps just one person, it's, it's a job done for me. Mad in it. That's mad. Way back at camp. There's people on trails. People behind me, mate. I'm on Alta Via One, mate. I'm not just doing. <laughs> I'm not doing Whitby Way. Can't be wasting that much energy going back and forth. But every day, mate. We do one every day. <sighs> Come rain or shine. And speaking of rain or shine, it's forecast from tonight, I think. And then we've got a few days of thunderstorms and heavy rain so and I'm wild camping this whole thing because to stay in these huts you've got a book like six months in advance and I don't have the sort of brain power to do that so I'm just wild camping it's I think it's all right as long as you like pitch after eight o'clock and leave before eight in the morning leave no trace be out of the way sort of up high I, I think it's completely fine that's what I'm going to do Long days. I keep getting so overwhelmed. Ah, oh, mate, I can feel. Ooh. Uh, there's gonna be tears at some point on this trail. There is, I think there is. We've just, uh, just sheer like overwhelmedness. Not sadness, not happiness, just being Overwhelmed, I think, because I feel it. I've had to stop myself a couple of times to be like, woof, woof. Wait till we go, find somewhere to go for a swim one day, put my head under the water and do man crying, where you just go, ball it all out under the water. Is he having that? You've got to be having that. You've got to. What's wrong with you if you don't, if you're not having that? Oh, wow. We're off up here. Didn't stay flat for long. Let's get up there, mate. Come on. Oh, I might do a separate video on, I was going to say, well, I was going to do a, a what's in my bag, but I forgot most of it, so that's out the window, isn't it? But what I'll do is I'll do a what I packed, how I got here, where I stayed, the sort of the logistics side of things I'll do in a separate video for anyone who's, uh, who's keen to do it and wants to know all the finer details of how to get here and, and what I did to get here. I barely got here if I'm honest, but I got here. A little traverse here. You don't want to stack it down there. I guess if it was wet and cloudy and rainy, 
and poor visibility this would be quite a quite a thing but the path is relatively wide as long as you keep your wits about you you're not going to end up down there face my fears on this one i'm going to have to there's no getting around some of the uh knife edge ridges and via ferratas and all that sort of stuff i've just got to get my head round it and crack on face my fears because bravery and being brave doesn't exist without fear you need fear to be brave and i was born brave it said my, the doctor said when i came out they were like nurse quick uh, get the medal we've got one that's been born brave i got a medal for it so i need to live up to that and i need to be brave and silence the inner void talking to me, telling me to jump off and that, telling him to shut up. There's a Via Ferrata up here. Uh, it's zigzagging up. There's these cables that you can hold on to or clip yourself in if you've got all the clobber. I'm just holding on to them. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Gotta do it, aren't you, kids? Come on. There's where we've come from. Around this corner. Up this little via ferrata and we keep going. So these are the signs for the Alta Via and this is the number that I'm doing one. Alta Via one. This way. There's a snake up here and it's that little V there, I believe, we push up through there. Whatever water I've got, I'll just drink it all now and refill it. We're so far so good, what's this? Religious stuff. Though. That was a wonderful little stop there. Managed to get a one and a half litre bottle of water as well, so we're winning. And I had some pasta, pig cheek pasta, that was the best pasta I think I've ever had in my life. It was delicious, and to eat it with these views in Italy, that was the best pasta I've ever had in my life. There, done. Well done. Wonderful stuff. Chatted to a few people. Nice one. So that's the first stop. If you're going to do this and take, you know, take your time and stuff, that's the first. They call them uh, Refugio, like refuge. But I can't say it because I keep going Rufio, Rufio, like, you know, uh, Peter Pan. Rufio! So I'd call it hut. I'm gonna bat on to the next one and see what's going in and then um yeah I don't need anything like that pasta should do me for the day. One meal a day. I can be in a calorie deficit for the first half of this hike, it doesn't matter. So one meal a day is enough. Um generate a look. So if I can just hit one of them huts a day for like a pasta dish or whatever they've got going on, I think we're going to get it, we'll get through it. And if I can buy a, a a one and a half litre bottle of water, then I can get through this. And also that means I've got, I was hoping to start eating me, uh, me food so that my, the weight of my bag went down because I've got a, like a week's worth of food in there, in here. It's very confusing to be honest. Alta Via 1, yeah, but that's got a 6, 23, 23, and that's got a 23 on it. Um, what's these say? 6 miles refugio sensor, and that's pointing sort of in between these two paths. Cool. 
and it's sort of pointing the same way but it says a different thing right luckily i do have a guide book we'll get into that later so i'll have to just look at my map there's the hut in the distance there i right, excuse these i gaffer taped them up to uh take them on to put them on plane but i've not taken them off yet they're all right hut we ended all the way around here come up up here and look at this mate <laughs> it's vast and beautiful like your ass jeez wow and that's what it's going to be a lot of on this hike is going to be some very very steep climbs and steep drops and I'm here for it steep here my hutch I don't know where are they going oh maybe that's it look there's a a roof a, a hut down there a lot of people down there a uh, map check first because I'm going down there into these woods uh, and through these fields and it's depending on how long I'm in them woods and fields I might that might be my best bet for camping tonight because I have been sort of keeping my eye out just to get the lay of the land. And I think I've seen like one possible pitch. It's all very, very rocky up top, so it's hard to pitch. And if I did, I probably wouldn't get my pegs in and I'd have to use rocks, which it's fine to do. But I feel like down in the woodland in these fields, it'll be a bit easier, although it's a bit early. Too much waffle, see ya. Look at that shit, mate. <laughs> the sun's gone behind clouds, which I'm grateful for, but most people stop hiking around like, you know, three o'clock because it's prone to heavy showers and thunderstorms in the afternoon. I don't have time for such luxuries. Come past that other hut. <clears throat> I asked her if, she, if they had Wi-Fi. And she said, no, not unless you're staying here. I said, what if I got a drink and all that? No. That's stuffy then. But fair dues. Fair do. My word, look at this, mate. Bushcraft. Look at all these little shacks, man. It's like a tiny little community and there's a little church over there. Cute as. Wow, people still are, still live in them. Some of them are collapsed, but some of them must be lived in like that. Look at that, that's cute. You can hear all bells from cows. But I think I'm on that path there. This is a cute little gaff, isn't it? And then you've got a roof here. Look at that for a touch. So you can fill your bottles up there. I'm all good. Let's go. That must do your heading, mate. Look at that for a bench. 10 out of 10 winding paths all the way down really steep descent down here we'll get here i don't even need any more water but i might drink my water and then fill it up there this is working out just grand and then i think i'll have a little rest down there take my socks and shoes off and that right i didn't get out from there and i was sat waiting for ages and then i got bored and sacked it off so bit of running water that was nice i'm off up there I'm off up there and I'm going to try and find somewhere to camp up there. I've seen a lake on the map. I'm going to try and get to there and see if I can camp by the lake. It's still a bit of a wreck though. And the thing is like, I look on my map and I'm like, oh, it's only four miles. But it, it's four miles of this. It doesn't have to take it out of you. You can't even speak, mate. So steep. <laughs> oh. 
sweating. There's gonna have to be a lot of voiceover on this one, I think. Cause I'm like, I'm coming up and I think of stuff to say and I'm just blowing to her, I can't do it. I'm like, Phew. no mate, gassed out. Oh, I'm my way through here. This is stunning, isn't it? Look at this. Peaceful as well. My concern is that that there is a lake that was on the map. It looks all but dried up. It doesn't look very inviting. But the other one's further up in the hill, so that might have a bit more, a bit more about it. Let's go see. Joey D. Just started another big ascent, and my uh, <gasps> this thigh is <laughs> just spasming like it's uh, it's bonking. Just this section here. It is uh, it's cramping and sort of spasming around my knee and that. Right, I've not had any electrolytes. I'll get some electrolytes down me in five minutes. I've probably forgot my electrolytes, haven't I? I'll tell you what, <laughs> I have. Do you know what? No, please no. Have I forgot my leckies? No, I haven't, thank God. Let's put two leckies in this water, whatever we've got left here. And hopefully this will get us to the next hut. Look at that mate, that is energy. Energy in a bottle. Come here. Unbonk me. Basically coming up there in Sun Shehine. Thigh started to go wobbly. <laughs> I've uh, I've sorted that out. Sorted wobbly thigh out. Just with some electrolytes. I was just bonking. Not enough salts in my body. Maybe a little bit dehydrated as well. So, double dropped leckies. There's nowhere to pitch though, man, look at it. It's just all undulating rock around here. There isn't a lot of wild camping on this uh, trek. It's, uh, it's sort of like a hut to hut thing, which I'm glad of, because these huts have saved me with the water. It just means I've also got to carry a week's worth of food on me. I'm gonna do it though, I'm not chucking it away. Yeah, so it's a hut to hut hike. Some people have tented it, because I have looked into it, but you do need to be respectful. Is that a cuckoo? You do need to be respectful and pitch up late. Look, in fact, just here, no tents. No tents in here, it said, but that's because there's the huts, there's cattle, there's all sorts in here, so obviously they don't want people pitching wigwams and it's a different kind of camping. They're like, you just can't come set up your tent and chill out. I read on a lot of forums that it's cool if you just pitch after eight at night and leave before eight in the morning. And obviously don't go around the huts and the cattle. I'm off up tops again. Brutal. <laughs> I'm off up there to try and find this lake. I tucked out the way, mate, so I'll be all right. Who's your defense? Look at this lad here, look. Who's done that? Mad frog. I'm nearly at my lake. It's just over here. I really hope that it's got places that I can camp. Otherwise, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know what I'm gonna do. It's hard to crunch out the miles in the Dolomites that I'm finding. The elevation is so much that you can't get any distance. So I think maybe I'll have only done 20K today. Which is not a lot, is it? What is that? Six fucking 30, about 13, 14 miles of summer. There's loads of cattle and it's right next to this road. And there was signs earlier. That is a shame, I was ready. Ready for a bit of a stop. Oh well. Well, I think I'll go for a swim anyway while I'm here. Cool myself down. Freshen up a little bit. Uh, and then keep going and then hopefully desperation will kick in, won't it? And I'll just have to keep somewhere. 
just roll up in tent and under a bush or whatever. But first of all, let's have a quick swim. Best believe the old budgie smuggler has made it to Italy. Woo! Oh, cold. That's so good. It's chilly. <laughs> it's chilly, but it's delightful. Man <laughs> <Stand> down. <laughs> MD. MD. Stunning behaviour, mate. So I ain't got long ne left now till it starts to get a bit dusky. I don't want to risk anything. If there's any more... I mean, we're up in the mountains already, but there's there's mountains and there's these units here, <laughs> which we will be tackling tomorrow. Uh, but I'll take anything now for the first night in Dolomites because I'm in the Dolomites. Ah, that's the thing. I'm in the Dolomites. Don't matter where I camp. I'm camping in the dollies. I want to be away from them cattle because they might come and have a, a chew on tent and also they've got them bells on them so i can't imagine that clanking around the tent all night so i'm giving them a swerve but i did see a, a marmot so that was good didn't couldn't get it on here because you don't have a zoom on you got it on my phone but i didn't get it in landscape so that might go in here let you have a look at a marmot zoomed right into a marmot or if i see another marmot that's better I'll put that in and you won't see a marmot now. Well, anyway, look, that is a derelict building. See, it has these, look. One, Dolomite, Via Frata. But where's the pointing bit? Which, like, which one? Which one is it, map time? Move, marmot. Right, I'm getting off the path because it's starting to get dark now and I don't want to get found out. As off path, searching, I mean, it can be as rough as you like. Just a tiny little flat bit. Don't even need to be that flat. I'm going up here to see if there's a plateau, but the amount of elevation I've done today I can't be doing too much of this. So I really hope it just flattens out. I've seen a good few marmots though. Enjoying my marmot sightings right here, girl. Right, the ground was alive with thistles over there, so I've come here and it's still got the odd one, but nothing that looks like it could burst my airbed touch wood. <clears throat> Behind this big rocks, if any rocks fall, they'll hit that instead of me and then probably push that onto me. I'm behind this rock. I'm off the path. Behind this rock, look at this. This is perfect. Now let's get Wigwam set up. Oh, there we are. I've been bit by something and things have started to bite me. What do you think? Wigwam in Italy, look. <laughs> Not too bad, is it? Look at that. Pretty good. Pretty good. I absolutely love this thing. It's so small and so light. And I just chuck it on airbed, leave it, do my other stuff. And by the time I've done all my other stuff, the airbed's just blown up for me. It's an absolute lifesaver, and I do, and I'm not just saying that, but I do have a, I've got a discount code for this thing so that you can save yourself a bit of money on it. The Flex Tail, uh, what is it? Don't know what it is, the Flex Tail pump, it's so small. I'll leave a link below this video, so, and uh, you can use that code. Go check it out if you want. And look at this, man. My new Enlightened Equipment Quilt. But I want something a bit lighter but warmer 
and this is perfect I've been using it I've used it a few times and it's delightful it, and it's not it's not restrictive good for me because I roll around and sleep on my side so so far so good I'm loving it that's my pillow is bag of bag of clothes is my pillow because I forgot my pillow uh, unless some magic or tragic happens I shall see thee on the morrow for day two as we head up there let's have a quick look at map time right welcome to map time this is map time after the fact so i'm trying to me my map's a little bit all busted up but this is the guidebook welcome so welcome to the guidebook i'm having to try and open pages down with one hand and film with other and right so this is the start i'm going to do a separate video on how to get to the start how to pack how to like get your stuff on the plane which how i got here basically but we're here off the bus there boom you get out of the bus and you are greeted by this unbelievable lake and every corner you cross it's like um it's like living in a windows screensaver every view it was incredible. This is stage one. We go around the lake. It's a, it's a beautiful walk just to go around the lake. You can hire boats and spend the day there. But thankfully, I came off here, away from the people, and off we go. And I tell you, it straight out of the gates, it is a lung-busting leg pumper, mate. You've got about 900 metres of elevation just in this first bit. Worming my way up through here. There was a little bit of via ferrata to be, to be done up here. Stunning views. I'm going to say that a lot about this, this hike. Stunning views. Cutting through this valley. I was just sort of getting my legs under me. Felt a bit overwhelmed by the whole experience, but then settled into it. That must be it. So that and so here is the first refugio where I stayed and had the best pasture of my life. So he's come down here, hit these paths, all very nice walking down here. So that would be stage one. If you were doing the longer version, you can walk, do this first walk and keep at this refugio. And uh, if you are doing the huts, you can make it as easy um, or as difficult as you want. I think six days was the limit where in this guidebook where it says it's you've got to crunch out the miles to do it in six days and the other one's like 12 days or something so you can really take your time off we went along here all wonderful i mean it's been a while since it's been a it's been a week or so since i've done it but i can still remember it so down through here still the views amazing continue on here so we come down here Around this corner to this other refugio. I didn't bother staying in that one. She wouldn't let me have Wi-Fi passwords. So I was like, right, keep it. We're off. And then we head down here. Beautiful down here. All through these woodlands. And there's a little alternative route that you can go here. I stuck with this one. Stuck with this one. Down here. Through this wood. And then it gets a lot squiggly. You can see. In any time you look at a map and it's all these squiggles. You know it's going to be steep. It was steep coming through here. Another refugio here. Amazing just to fill your water bottles at them. Over the little bridge. And then up the big ascent here. Really started to feel it. My legs started to get the old jitters up here. My thigh, for some reason, just in one of my thighs started to bonk. So double drop some leckies around here. And we cracked on. That's the lake, so on the map I saw this lake, but in real life when I looked at it, it was all dried up and green, so... I thought, well, that's not good for me. On we go, up and around. This was lovely. There's no camping signs all around here within these gates, so... I knew I couldn't settle down here. Round, I cut through here to another refugio. I didn't stop at this one either, because I just had enough water, so I didn't need anything. We're pushing up. That's the lake that I had a little swim in there. That's the one I saw on my map. And I thought, oh, I could camp around there. Look, there's a little path that goes around it. Um, it looks quite flat there. So, But there was too many cows and it was too near this uh, hut. So I strolled on. 
keeping on going. You have to keep your wits about you because these signposts are quite confusing. There's another refugio there. So I walked along here. This was where I was like, I've got, it's getting dark, so I need somewhere to camp. Didn't want to be in view of this thing here. I looked up here on these platters, couldn't find anything, came back down and I camped for the first night, I believe, around here. Night one. I'll put my stats on the screen. All trails was playing up a little bit, so I don't know how legit all these stats are, but that's what I've got and that's what I've worked out. Right, thanks for watching. If you're not subscribed already, please consider subscribing. Hit the bell notification down here to be notified of the next upload and I'll see you all soon.